You know, living with you, it hasn't been easy. People see me, but they think of you. Now with all this going on, this is gonna be worse than ever. It don't have to be. No, sure it does. Why, you got a lot going on, kid. Oh, what, my last name? That's the reason I got a decent job. That's the reason why people deal with me in the first place. Now I start to get a little ahead. I start to get a little something for myself, and this happens. You think I'm hurting you? Yeah, in a way you are. Often the children of great athletes, celebrities are doomed to be in the shadow of their parents all their lives. They set the bar so high that children have no chance to even closely compare with their older generation. But this is clearly not about the daughter of the legendary Muhammad Ali's Layla Shibi Stingin Ali. Her story is one that shatters expectations and proves that greatness can indeed be inherited, but also forged through one's own relentless pursuit of excellence. Layla Ali was born on December 30th, 1977. She is the younger of Muhammad Ali's two daughters from his third wife, Veronica. After her parents' divorce when she was eight years old, she resided with her mother in California. Layla grew up in Malibu and completed her education at Santa Monica Community College. According to promoter Mike Ackery, her rebellious nature led her into some street fights. At the age of 16, she was caught shoplifting and later served a three-month sentence in a juvenile detention center for another offense. Prior to pursuing a professional boxing career, she operated a beauty salon. She planned to live a normal life, but suddenly she accidentally saw a boxing match in which world champion and professional boxing Christy Martin participated. The girl liked the fight so much that she immediately decided to enter the ring herself. Ali's decision to box despite her father's struggle with the symptoms of Parkinson's disease has of course sparked a mixture of debate and criticism. Unexpectedly, but the main obstacle on the way to the ring was her father, Muhammad Ali. He flatly refused to train his daughter and by all possible means dissuaded her from this venture. But the daughter's obstinacy turned out to be no less than that of her father. After several months of hard struggle, youth won, Muhammad gave up and nevertheless began to prepare his daughter for a professional debut. This was no ordinary debut. A good fight could have added to the buzz generated by the return of the legendary Ali name. Unfortunately, lining up a totally safe opponent for Layla's debut had produced an April Fowler and out of shape novice who was too easily and too rapidly flattened by the young Ali. The 21-year-old Ali knocked out April Fowler with a left-right combination at 31 seconds of the first round and then stood over Fowler, yelling for her to get up and fight. It was the same pose that her father struck when he stood over a fallen Sonny Liston in their rematch in 1965 in Lewiston, Maine. The bout was too one-sided to establish any boxing credentials for Layla. Still, she showed some media savvy and a hint of things to come. Sweet science it wasn't, but the media lapped it up. Ali won her second professional bout by TKO with three seconds left. She defeated young debutante Shadana Pennybaker. After two wins in a row, on April 8, 2000, Layla received the first big scare of her boxing career en route to a controversial TKO of Karen Bill in the third round. Bill knocked Ali down with an uppercut in the second round. Layla showed she had come to fight by getting up and storming back, but she was still getting pummeled in fierce action at round's end. The third round saw still more heated action with both women going all out and landing cleanly until the referee suddenly stopped the fight in Ali's favor. This drew boos from the crowd, who had been cheering the all-out effort of both boxers. Karen Bill had taken some punishment and was bleeding from the nose, but she was in better shape than Ali had been during the second round. Many, including an angry Bill, felt that the stoppage was premature. Layla Ali's next career move brought her to Tian He Stadium in Guangzhou, China, on April 22, 2000. This time, Layla was opposed by 30-year-old former Tough Woman Tournament participant Christina King. 
King won her only professional fight via TKO in the second round on January 28, 2000. However, she lacked the skills to handle Ali's combinations and movement and work her way inside. King was in trouble all the way. She was rocked in the second. Then badly bloodied in the third round in which a booming right from Layla knocked her mouthpiece out. King was game to keep on fighting in the fourth, but Ali quickly had her in big trouble and this stoppage, which moved Ali's pro record to 6-0, six, six KOs, was well deserved. On June 15, 2000, Layla moved her record to 7-0 by knocking out a windmilling Marjorie Jones at 1 minute 8 seconds of the first round. Layla next took a timeout to get married, then returned to the ring for her first fight against a genuine title contender. On October 20th, 2000 at the Palace in Auburn Hills, Michigan, Ali advanced to 8-0 with a unanimous six-round decision over another KO specialist, Kendra Lenhart. This was Ali's first fight to go the distance. Strong right hand. She's got some nice range, does uh, Kendra Lenhart. Linhart, a former IFBA world title challenger, rocked Ali and bruised her face with several swinging shots to the head. Linhart hammered Ali with a hard right with 20 seconds left in the second round. And hurt her with a left right combination in the third. Ali rallied to take the final three rounds with more decisive and disciplined punches as Lenhart tired. Both fighters looked nearly exhausted by the end of the bout. The bout provided more excitement than the men's main event, which was cut short after two rounds when Andrew Galota quit against Mike Tyson. By the way, I talked about this Tyson fight earlier on the channel. Ali. Ali's credibility as a boxer got a further boost when Kendra Linhart went on to knock out highly favored several-time world champion Valerie Moffwood in Beaumont, Texas on April 19, 2001, taking the vacant WIBF super middleweight title. On March 2, 2001, at the Turning Stone Casino in Verona, New York, Ali moved her pro record to 9-0 when she knocked out Christine Robinson with a barrage of rights and a left uppercut in the fifth round. Robinson absorbed Ali's right repeatedly in the early rounds, but hung tough and landed a few hard rights of her own in the third. Ali became more aggressive and started leading with a left jab, keeping her right cocked, ready for an opening. Robinson matched Ali punch for punch in the fourth. But Ali got the upper upper hand when she backed Robinson into a corner in the fifth. Ali threw a barrage of rights then put Robinson down for the count with a powerful left. The stage was set for a much hyped Ali vs. Frazier for generational grudge match that pitted Layla Ali against Joe Frazier's daughter Jackie Frazier Lide at the Turning Stone Casino on June 8, 2001. Layla, I'ma kick you, my baby. It's okay. Don't be scared. Your daddy was scared.
him. My father beat him. It's okay. He got over it. I'm going to give you the time, okay? The time for me to kick your butt is September. The year 2000. The food in Manila. That's the pitch man. I want you, baby. This bout again attracted major media coverage, including being featured as the cover story in the week's TV guide, a first for women's boxing. Before facing Layla Ali, Jackie Frazier lied, had fought only safe opponents and had shown little sign of the ring skills needed to make Ali versus Frazier for more than the palest shadow of their father's famous encounters. The boxing press talked of the daughters sullying their father's reputations. Some predicted of Groner and Verona. Many in the men's boxing world, often far from friendly to female fighters, seemed ready to trash women's boxing yet again if the event was a flop. In a complete reversal of roles from the earlier generation, Ali was the quiet one during pre-fight press events, while Frazier Lai talked a blue streak, hurling taunts and jibes at Ali while selling the fight as a grudge match. In fact, Ali vs. Frazier 4, while far from the best boxing that female fighters produced in 2001, turned out to be an entertaining toe-to-toe -to -toe slugfest. Frazier Light started aggressively, but Ali won the middle rounds. Frazier Light looked like she might be in trouble, but she charged back in the late going and staggered Ali several times in a rousing finish. Frazier Light rose to the occasion and took Ali to a hard-fought eight-round majority decision. The scorecards were 77 to 75 and 79 to 73 for Ali, while one card headed a draw at 76 to 76. The two biggest names among the blooming crop of famous boxing daughters had confounded some of the skeptics by putting on a show that might encourage many to take a closer look at other women's boxing. As she had done against Kendra Linhart in her first six-rounder, Ali faded in the late going and showed signs that she needed to work on her endurance if she had her sights set on ten-rounders against the best of her weight division, who now eagerly awaited her. Muhammad Ali didn't attend his daughter's most publicized fight to date because of a prior commitment to a NASCAR event. After this event, Layla Ali took another time out from competition, this time for surgery to her shoulder, while also teaching boxing aerobics classes three times a week. Ali returned to the ring on June 7, 2002. Weighing in at 164 pounds, she cruised to a six-round unanimous decision over Chevelle Williams. And then, on August 17, 2002, Layla won her first world title before a capacity crowd and a national PPV audience. Ali showed good hand speed and her body punching had Suzette Taylor in trouble in the opening round. Ali frequently beat Taylor to the punch and showed a combination of speed and power that spoke volumes about her progress as a boxer. Referee Kenny Bayless halted the scheduled 10-rounder after title holder Taylor absorbed a barrage of unanswered punches. Ali TKO'd Suzette Taylor at 111 in the second round to take the IBA super middleweight belt. WBAN named Layla Ali its Fighter of the Month in September 2002. On November 8, 2002, Layla won by a TKO in the eighth round over IWBF and Waiba Super Middleweight Champion Valerie Moffood in a triple title unification bout. Ali dominated the Texan, with whom she had testy exchanges before the fight. Ali took home the Waiba and the IWBF Super Middleweight belts as well as her IBA belt from this bout, which was carried live on ESPN2. Under new trainer Roger Mayweather, Ali has developed boxing skills to match the expectations that her name conjures up for the boxing community. WBAN named her its Fighter of the Year in 2002. On February 14, 2003, Fighting in her dad's original hometown, Layla TKO'd former world champion Mary and Almager in the fourth round. 
Ali took the action to Almager in the opening round while still looking wary of Almager's southpaw stance and ring experience. Almager looked overmatched by Ali's quickness and reach in the second, and was swinging her punches, looking to tag Ali with one haymaker. Almager kept swinging in the third while Ali threw precise combinations and kept her distance well. Almager faded as Ali picked her apart with body shots in the fourth and the fight was stopped with Mary and clearly out of gas against the ropes and hurting from a hard right to the midsection. Against the ropes and then trying to choose the right punch. That was the right one. The right hand to the body. The guard was up. She dropped down. On June 21st, 2003, Layla again stopped Valerie Moffood, this time in the sixth round. Ali didn't look quite as sharp in this fight as she had in their first match last November, but she still had enough to overwhelm Moffat. Christy Martin had personified the sport in the 1990s, but was at a severe height and reached disadvantage against Ali. The scheduled 10-rounder was for Ali's IBA super middleweight title, but also on the line was status as the icon of women's boxing. Martin charged out to start the fight and both landed heavily at first, but Ali staggered Martin against the ropes near the end of the round, which left Martin already red and swollen under her left eye. Being normally a smaller fighter, she thinks she punches harder than anybody they was ever faced. Right hands by Ali, rapid fire again and again and again. And Martin is in trouble. Fighting for her survival here. At the end of the Ali again rocked Martin early in the second. Martin came back to land some shots near the end of the second round. Here comes Christy Martin. Christy. But Ali knocked her down in the third with a string of quick hard uppercuts. Martin was dropped by a rapid-fire barrage of leather in the fourth and her husband slash trainer Jim exhorted her to stay down and not try to beat the count. Martin was unable to counter Ali's reach advantage and get to within range to land combinations that might have slowed Ali down. Martin fell with her first loss by knockout. Ali's next scheduled appearance was to have been a six-rounder with unbeaten Gwendoline O'Neill of Guyana on January 10, 2004 in Abuja Stadium, Lagos, Nigeria, in aid of a charity combating AIDS and human trafficking. O'Neill had already been in Nigeria for five days when Ali canceled her flight to Nigeria, citing flight connections that would not allow her adequate time to prepare for the bout. On July 17th, 2004 at Prince George Stadium in Bowie, Maryland, and televised live on pay-per-view, Layla successfully defended her IBA World Super Middleweight title by TKOing former Tough Woman champion Nikki Eplian in the fourth round. On July 30th, 2004, before 17,000 fans at Freedom Hall in Louisville, Kentucky, Layla successfully defended her IWBF super middleweight belt by stopping Monica Nunez of the Dominican Republic at 42 seconds in the ninth round. Here comes the towel. Here comes the towel. 
Ali had Nunez on the ropes when the challenger's corner threw in the towel. Many felt unsatisfied and grumbled at the end result when Nunez's corner, for no reason apparent, waved the bout to a sudden halt. Many fans didn't even know what had happened. Rarely did Ali let her punches go, and even rarer was her attempts to try and step back from Nunez's clutch and grab survival strategy. Even at the stoppage, while Ali did have Nunez pinned briefly on the ropes near a neutral corner, the Dominican challenger appeared relatively unhurt. Ackley adds the win over Nunez was solid, but certainly lackluster in many ways. On September 24, 2004, Layla won the IWBF light heavyweight title with a third round knockout of Gwen O'Neill of Guyana. Unfortunately, friends, I did not find a video or photo of the battle on the internet. On February 11, 2005, at the Phillips Arena in Atlanta, Georgia, 8,213 ringside fans and a live ESPN2 audience saw Layla defend her Waiba Super Middleweight title by TKOing Cassandra Geiger of Arkansas in the eighth round of a scheduled 10 rounder. Ali came out aggressively in the eighth and eventually dropped Geiger to one knee beside the ropes. And Layla's not comfortable because she's not used to having someone physically. Very much good to have you in studio tonight with Brian Kenny and this year, right? And Ali just swung. Geiger had now lost her appetite for continuing the lopsided affair, which was ended by the referee. After the fight, Ali said that her next opponent could be Wyba middleweight champion Leotisha Robinson of Chicago, who KO'd Monica Nunez in the first round of on the undercard of the Ali Geiger mismatch. She also hinted that she is thinking about starting a family. On June 11, 2005, with her father among the 15,472 ringside fans, Layla TKO'd Aaron Tuffill of Huntington Beach, California in the third round to win the newly minted WBC Women's Super Middleweight title. Though Ali used a jab occasionally to set up other punches, most of her damage was done with a stiff right hand that Tuffield seemed unable to avoid. By the end of the second round, Tuffield's nose was bleeding profusely and her corner was unable to stop it. Tuffield started the third round more effectively, but by the end of the round, Ali backed her into a corner throwing a barrage of combinations, landing about 15 unanswered punches to Tuffield's face. The bout was stopped when Tuffield turned her back to her. The bout was also a defense of Ali's Waiba super middleweight and was carried live on Showtime pay-per-view. Ali improved her record to 21-0. On December 17, 2005, a sellout crowd of over 10,000 saw Layla defeat Asa Sandal of Sweden by a TKO in the fifth round. This was Ali's first fight without McLean as her manager. After more than holding her own by using a left hook against an unusually sluggish looking Ollie in the early going, a tiring sandal looked stunned after taking a hard right 90 seconds into the fifth round. Ollie took advantage of the opportunity and threw a barrage of combinations, backing sandal up against the ropes and peppering her with more quick combos. Sandal looked winded and failed to defend herself, so the referee stopped the fight. On November 11, 2006, at Madison Square Garden in New York City, Layla TKO'd Shelley Burton of Kalispell, Montana in the fourth round, defending her WIBF and WBC super middleweight belts. <laughs> Ali improved her record to 23-0 with 20 KOs. The bout was not carried by HBO, despite being the co-main event on a card on which men's fights were carried by HBO. On February 3rd, 
2007 at the Emperor's Palace Casino in Johannesburg, South Africa Layla Ali stopped Gwendolyn O'Neill just 56 seconds into the first round of a scheduled 10-rounder for the WBC and Waiba Super Middleweight titles. Ali was quoted in an AP article that she apologized to boxing fans, including former South African President Nelson Mandela, for the brevity of the fight. The fight's publicity was out of proportion to its competitiveness, as Ali had already easily dispatched O'Neill in 2004 on the last occasion that O'Neill fought outside Guyana where her opposition is limited. Ali improved her record to 24-0 with 21 KOs and intimated that she would not be boxing again for a while. WBAN received a large number of comments from readers after the second O'Neill fight regarding Ali's boxing career, its effect on women's boxing, and the possibility that this mismatch might be Ali's last fight. In fact, the O'Neill fight proved to be Ali's last as a pro boxer. She went on to compete on Dancing with the Stars, coming in third behind Apollo Anton Ono and Joey Fatone in 2008. In 2009, she joined Hulk Hogan in the remake of American Gladiators and became a regular on the talk show circuit. Ali had matured into a strong and capable boxer whose ring career would merit serious attention even without her family name. But the media buzz, endorsements, and fame she achieved came from the extra ingredient her background brought to the world of women's boxing. Throughout her ring career, Layla Ali walked in the largest possible footprints with the world watching to see if she measured up. Her genes may have bestowed some extra skills, but they also brought her extra scrutiny as fight fans asked if she could live up to the expectations generated by her famous name. Women's boxing as a whole was better off because of the extra attention she garnered for the sport. In July of 2015, Layla Ali was inducted in the Women's Boxing Hall of Fame.